Hello. In this video, we're going to do a short demonstration how to use two very important methods. And those methods are the substring methods. Now, the reason why I say methods and not method is because substring is an overload method, meaning that there is, in fact, multiple methods, and Java will know which one to call based on the parameters that are passed. So, if you pass it a single integer, which it stands for beginning index, it will call this substring method. Whereas if you send it two parameters, two integer parameters, one representing the beginning index and the other one representing the end index, we'll call the second version of substring. So again, a nice thing about this documentation, and I've just simply I've pulled up the online string documentation, is that if I click on the actual name of the method, it pops me down to a nice example. So what we can see here is in this example is that if I call the substring method, which takes a single integer parameter, using the word unhappy, and I pass the integer 2, it returns happy. What substring does is it takes a component of the string. So this substring method in particular, starting from that specific specified index, will return everything to the right of it. So in this case, if we start look at unhappy, u would be index 0, n would be index 1, and happy would be index 2. So starting from index 2, it will turn everything past that. So if we take a look at an example here, we have this is a demo. And let's pretend that I wanted this just to access the word demo. So I'm going to copy the word demo into word 2. So let's just pull up a little diagram here. So here's my, my memory diagram. And again, we can write in the ind indexes for this word. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3. The space would be 4. I've shown that with the little notation there. 5 is the i, 6 is the s, 7 is the space, 8 is the a, 9 is the space, 10 is the d, 11 is the e, 12 is the m, and 13 is the o. So this string has indices 0 to 13, and it is a length of 14 characters. So if I want just the word demo, we can see the D is in position 10. So I'm going to go back in here. And we know that the substring method returns a string. So I'm going to say word2 is equal to, and I'm going to take word1 as the implied object, substring, and I want a single parameter, and I'm going to pass it 10. So now if I, what will happen is using word1 as the implicit object, we will use the substring method and take all the characters from index 10 to the end of the word. And if we run this, what we see is that word2 becomes the word demo. Likewise, let's say I wanted just is a demo. Again, I can jump back into my diagram here and see is starts at index 5. So it just takes a minor change in my method call and I need to change the, per, the argument that's passed. The argument being the actual value, the argument to be 5. And if I run this now, we get is a demo. Now let's imagine I wanted the word is. I don't want is a demo. This is a situation where we would use the second version of the substring method. And if we scroll down here, we see the second version. And we can see the example given. So hamburger being the implicit object, substring 4, 8 returns U-R-G-E. So the way this works is the first number, it starts from the index which is indicated by the first parameter, and then goes to one less the final number. So in this case, we look at hamburger, h is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 is the u, and then we count 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 is the r, and it actually discounts the r. So if we apply this now to our example here, if I wanted just the word is, we see it starts at 5, and then I go 6, and I want index 6, so I have to go one past that to 7. So in this case, if I call the substring method now, and I pass it 5, comma 7, and I run this, 
we'll get word to is is. I hope that helped.